Continuing with reminders that encourage us, us to have good character. And we can just uh, appreciate the vastness of the subject. We can take multiple weeks and co cover many, many different angles, different aspects of good character. Today, inshallah, we'll cover on the topic of forbearance. Forbearance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves forbearance. Not only does He subhanahu wa ta'ala practice forbearance with us, but He also prefers that we, we practice forbearance with the overall creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. The hadith is narrated by Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhumah. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhumah, he narrates that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told a, a companion by the name of Ashaj that إِلَّا فِيكَ خَصْلَتَيْنِ يُحِبُّهُمُ اللَّهِ الْحِلْمُ وَالْأَنَاتِ Ashaj, the leader of the, of the tribe of Abdul Qais, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam noticed two qualities within him and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made it known to him as well that you have two qualities within you that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala loves. Those two qualities are forbearance and deliberateness. So the other aspect, we already mentioned forbearance and deliberateness is take, taking your time with something, making sure that it's done completely to the fullest, to the best of your ability, to the best of, of, of uh, quality standards. So there's a story behind this hadith. And the story is that this companion, the, the tribe leader of Abdul Qais, known as Ashaj, he, he would frequent Medina. <coughs> he was a businessman and he would frequent Medina in regards to business and trade. In one of his uh, trips, he met Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he converted to Islam on that trip. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent a letter to his tribe and the tribe took it favorably, meaning the invitation to Islam from Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the tribe of Abdul Qais, they, they were impressed by the letter. Well, at least many, many of the tribe's people, they were impressed. And on the next trip, the narration mentioned around 14 or 40 people, they, they met with Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when they reached Medina, everyone except for this companion Ashaj, they rushed to meet Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Ashaj, he, however, he took his time and he took care of the animals, making sure that the animals were secured and they had some food for them to, to eat while the tribes people were away. Ashaj, he took his time to get ready. He dressed himself before coming and meeting with Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In the meeting, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked whether everyone is pledging allegiance for themselves or are they representing the entire tribe? So the, the tribe's people, the 14 or 40 people, they they burst forward that they, they, they mentioned that we represent the entire tribe. Out of excitement and out of, out of, out of to demonstrate willingness that we are willing and ready 
to accept Islam. Ashaj, however, he he confirmed that Ya Rasulullah, each individual will only represent themselves. They do not represent the entire tribe. In other words, these people here, they are not in the rightful uh, status to represent the entire tribe. They can only represent themselves and their own Islam. Ashaj, he confirmed to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Ya Rasulullah, the four, 14 or 40 people here along with myself, we will go back to our tribes people and we will start the, the da'wah effort over there and we will try and convince guidance is after all in the hands of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, who will accept and who will reject. But Ashaj, he confirmed that these people here, they represent themselves only and they do not represent the entire tribe. So from the beginning till the end, in every single thing Ashaj practiced and his behavior was, was very calm. He was forbearing with his people. He, he did not reprimand his people. He did not shout at his people that, how dare you say that you represent the entire tribe. He was also very calm in making his decisions. He was also very calm in carrying himself. He was not in a rush. So this, this has many meanings for us, especially in our day and age, uh, in regards to impulse, impulse decisions. Impulse decisions and impulse actions that we find in our day and age. We should take lesson from this hadith that we should not be impulsive in everything that we do. That something just came to our mind without a second thought, we just rushed in action. We should not also uh, never rush to judge someone else. We should be thoughtful, measured, well considered in every single thing that we do. After all, our world is dominated by nothing else except for the internet. The internet dominates our world in 2022. And impulse actions can go even as simple as we should not be sharing and forwarding and posting every single thing that comes into our experience. We should rather be deliberate, we should be calm, we should analyze what are we about to share, is there any truth to it, is it full of the lies. We should find out all of the facts. And absolutely we should never pass judgment on other people on impulse. Also, we should not be making impulse purchases. Online has made it so much easy that it's just the click of a button. It's so quick that even Amazon has one click purchase. One click purchase meaning that you, you have already confirmed everything. Your payment is confirmed, your, your shipping address is confirmed, all of your uh, personal details, everything is already confirmed. Amazon has made it so easy, one click purchase. Amazon knows this very well, that's why they even, they make the return process so easy as well. People love this. The impulse purchases have become so addicting that people uh, rationalize by saying that, oh, if I don't like it, I can simply return it. And lastly, we should, Never be impulsive on, on trending news as well. Trending news is a, is a modern day phenomenon that something yesterday's trending news is probably old news today. Today, the general public and the general population of the world, they're waiting for the next trending news. So we should not be impulsive in these, in these matters. The world has become what is known as a global village. Global village means that something on the opposite side of the world will reach us within seconds. And in the generations of past, it would take months and months. We have here 
we don't I don't see him but I won't mention the name when he, he mentioned and he shared his experience that when he first came to America as a student his mother passed away and the news of his mother passing away it did not reach him until one month later it came in the form of a letter by air, air mail and after one month later, this is probably you're talking the 1950s, 1960s, he was here as a student. He came to find out about his mother's passing one month after he received the letter in the mail. So we can just see that within a few decades how the world has changed. And one more hadith, and that is in regards to encouraging moderation. Moderation is part of a prophetic quality. أَسَّمْتُ الْحَسَنِ وَتُعَدَّتُ وَالْإِقْتِصَادُ جُزْءٌ مِنْ أَرْبَعٍ وَعِشْرِينَ جُزْءٌ مِنَ النُّبُوَّةِ This hadith mentions that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that gracefulness, unhurriedness, and moderation they are amongst the 24 parts of nabuwa. So here the it connects with the previous hadith in that we should not be rushed and, and things that we do, we should be moderate. Moderate here is also, we, we're focusing here on this hadith in regards to moderation. Moderation is such a word that we might have been hearing repeatedly and we might have uh, kind of put it on the back of our mind, but the moderation has, has become twisted in our day and age. Twisted meaning that moderation, when you associate moderation with, with religion, the efforts behind uh, something called moderate Islam, we've, we've probably heard this, and who else says moderate Islam besides the critics of Islam? The critics of Islam will, will say that, you know, you Muslims, you need to be a little bit more moderate. You should not be so fanatic. You should not be so extremist. So when we when we look into what their the context is and what their intentions are, we can see that to the non-Muslim population, extremist Muslims are even people who worship five times a day. Why are you taking it so seriously? Take it easy. Why do you have to be so fanatic about worshiping five times a day? So when, when you associate, in this hadith it mentions that moderation is part of nabuwa, but we're confirming that when, when modern day usage, especially by non-Muslims, when they use moderation, and that also with religion, moderate Islam, it has a very twisted meaning behind it. And we should be very careful because moderating religion is basically they're trying to tame, they're trying to domesticate Islam. And if you look at domestication, let's just look at some of the animals nowadays. They were wild animals before. Wild animals such as the example of a dog. Dog was never domesticated in the sense that you keep a dog inside the home. But people have domesticated the dog and they have calmed it down and they have allowed it into their homes. So when the non-Muslims, they, they mention moderate Islam, they're basically saying that Islam is, billah, they're saying that Islam is wild, and Islam needs to be tamed, and Islam and Muslims need to be domesticated so that it could be something acceptable in the Western society, in the Western civilization. So we can confirm to ourselves and looking at specifically a verse in, in Surah Al-Kahf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تُطِعْ مَنَا قَلْنَا قَلْبَهُ عَنْ ذِكْرِنَا وَاتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ وَكَانَ أَمْرُهُ فُرُطًا This verse we can use to comfort ourselves that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that never follow the people who basically are neglectful 
of the remembrance of Allah, they are neglectful of the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and such people they only follow their desires and their their nafs. Don't follow those people. They have they have no connection with spirituality, they have no connection with religiosity. They only follow their desires and their and their whims. So we should never take their their uh, advices or their words of encouragement <laughs> deliberately or seriously. We should think for ourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the capability of free thinking and we should use this to our advantage to, to find the higher ground. And what we use are sacred texts. Sacred texts are the Quran and Hadith, the Sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to guide our way. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow for these two qualities to come into our list of good characters. Those two qualities are forbearance and moderation.